Welcome back everybody, my name is Liam, this is my hobby room, and today we're continuing our modification on the 1 to 144 scale 1995 Wing Gundam. So last we left off, we took a look at the completed model kit, we took a look at its articulation, some of its accessories, all of its accessories, and its transformation, and we also talked a little bit about the modifications that I'm going to do to it as part of the old to gold competition that Zaku Aurelius has going on on his channel, which I'm very excited to be a part of. There's been a lot of really cool participants in this, uh, in this project, making some really cool work, and I am excited to be one of them, providing I finish in time. <laughs> So before I jump into this fully, I just want to mention up top that I'm going to be doing a tutorial series shortly. Uh, I do have a bunch of videos I want to make before then, so we'll see which comes first, whichever I'm feeling like. But the tutorial series that I plan on doing is going to cover various aspects of modeling techniques and pretty much everything I know about those techniques. And I'm going to timestamp each video so you know exactly where you're going for what technique. Because something I find I do a lot is explain modeling techniques in my videos as I'm working, but I tend to do the same points over and over again. And this way I can just be like, want to know how I did that? Go here and there'll be a thing. Uh, so I think that will be probably the best way to go about it. me again hi uh you've been hearing my voice now this is my face the only one i got i just wanted to say thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed this video then you should take a look at the rest of my channel liam's hobby room and subscribe if you haven't already because there's a ton of gunpla content on there there's a whole bunch i've made so many videos and i i have a lot of fun doing it so it would mean the world if you could subscribe and take a look at some of that stuff uh and if you want to get more involved with the channel you can do so with our free liam's hobby room discord which has been a pretty rip-roaring good time, I must say. Lots of fun modelers in there, sharing what they're working on, talking to one another about techniques, uh, giving each other advice. It's a very supportive little community, and I'm really, really blessed to be a part of it. So uh, that's down in the description below. It's free. That's exciting. And if you find yourself in a position to do so, and you'd like to give back to the channel and help keep the Liam's Hobby Room lights on, then you can do so via a one-time donation on Ko-fi. Uh, thank you very much for those of you that even consider it. It's very, very kind of you, uh, and it means the world to me. All of that goes right back into the channel, uh, buying supplies and, and stuff that I need for videos, uh, and putty if I run out. That's the thing that recently happened, so thank you very much. <laughs> and without much more ado, let's get back to the video. Sanding down the parts a little, we can see that they're ready for reintegration. Let's cement them back together and let them cure before we continue. The next step is to modify the waist. I want to add a ball joint between the torso and the waist to allow for some cool poses at the end of this process. To do that, we need to get rid of the excess plastic bits in the torso, and while we're at it, we can extend the waist to give the Wing Gundam some much needed verticality. To make sure I don't cover over the waist peg, I can use a marker to highlight the area and stamp it on the plot plate I'm using. Then I know where to drill. Now by cementing the plot plate to the bottom, we can add some height. Okay, so now you can see here that I've cemented all the pieces back together, back where they're supposed to go, uh, and the results of our sawing and putting plastic art in have just basically widened this entire piece. So it's like a little, it's like a little bucket, and you can plug the rest of the body uh, into this thing once that's all been sanded down. But for now, I'm going to sand this down, and then we will uh, get to the connection of how this is going to plug into that. 
Now is kind of the moment of truth. We're just going to put the torso together, so all of the mods are mostly done. Uh, it's not looking very pretty, but that phase will come after. So let's take some super glue, and we're just going to put this ball joint in place. Now this ball joint, if I didn't mention it earlier, it's because I forgot, uh, is going to uh, connect the top of the torso to this uh, waist section here. So we're going to drill a hole in it and put this sucker in there. But before that, I'm just going to put some super glue around the base of this thing. Then we're just gonna put some super glue inside the uh, torso block here, right here, and here. And that's what it's gonna stick to. Uh, and now we just drill a hole into the waist section here, like so. Now I also added some plat plate to the top of the waist so you don't see a huge gap between it and the torso when it bends. And then we just put them together. There you go. And voila, the torso was done. That is the most complex mod out of the way. Now we can continue with some of the other stuff. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna mod because I've kind of sort of already maybe started uh, is the head. Uh, and the main problem is that I find it very thin. So what I'm gonna do is add a piece of plot plate down the center here, uh, and that is essentially it. Uh, but I'm gonna take my chisels and my hobby knife here and sharpen up a lot of the sides, get rid of all the flash, make sure all the edges are nice and clean. Uh, and then I'm gonna sand it down and it'll be pretty much done. Uh, just to be safe so I don't wreck it, let's get that V-fin off. And we'll put that over here. Now the head splits into three parts in the weirdest way. You've got the front little bit, you got the, the brim of the cap, and then the back of the head. Uh, it is an odd looking head and it's like completely flat on the bottom, which is also a little bit strange. Um, again, I, I don't wanna change it too much because that is kind of the charm of it. So uh, we're just gonna do a little bit of cleanup work here on this head. Uh, so right now I'm just carving a little bit of plastic away to make sure that the face is defined. Uh, I also want to make sure that the seam lines are of the appropriate depth uh, because the molding is so soft and you kind of lose them in some of the details here. So I'm just going through with my hobby knife and very, very lightly scoring certain areas that I know I'm going to be scribing into or chiseling into uh, just to give them a little bit more definition. Uh, let's actually, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is get rid of these little tabs on the back these little pegs uh, because I'm going to be adding a piece of plastic uh, to lengthen the head. So let's get rid of those. Uh, but I'm going to leave this one on the top of the head here. I don't think that one needs to go anywhere. I'll just trim it down a little bit. So now things are looking a little bit cleaner. Uh, I do have to put some putty on the face because I did make a couple marks. But the last thing I want to do with the actual face uh, is to sharpen up the eyes a little bit. I feel like they're a little bit too big. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to carve them down a teeny little bit. But this can be... Uh, Wow, this can be easy to get wrong. Just want to make sure they're nice and sharp and that they stand out uh, on the finished model kit. All right, so the head is mostly done. This has to cure and then I can clean it up a bit after. Now that the head's fully cured, let's just do some sanding on it. Bring everything uh, in line. Make sure it's nice and straight and clean looking. I ended up putting some plastic card on the front of the camera here because I wanted to elongate it just a little bit. So I'm hoping it turned out well. So it's just this gray part right here uh, at the edge of the camera. That's, it's really not that much. I just wanted to extend it a wee bit. Now I'm just going to go in and clean it up a tiny bit more uh, and sand down the rest of the head here. So let's do, oh, here's an easy one, beam saber. First thing we gotta do, clip off the old beam saber. Boom, done. So I've just made a little pilot hole here with my chisel, and then we're going to drill into this with the pin vise, wherever, wherever I've put that. Now, I believe it's a 1.5 millimeter hole that the beam saber blades go into, so this might not actually be wide enough. I can't remember what I just grabbed. Uh, so there we go. And then we just take a regular green beam effect part and put it right in there. I actually think I'm gonna have to glue this in because it's a little wobbly. So I'm gonna sand this down because if you've seen the way I do beam sabers on this channel, this is how I do it. Basically, I just sand down the beam. I give it a nice kind of cloudy look. To me, it makes it look like there's there's more like hard light, I guess, in, in the finished model. This isn't my idea. I didn't come up with this. Uh, it's just something I see online, and I actually kind of like it. And there we have our beam saber. Okay, so for the nose cone shield, what I want to do is fill in this hollow space down here. I'm not too worried about this piece up here. It's not. It's going to be mostly hidden by the arm. So after I fill this part in, I want to align this, this piece here with some 
plot plate, just some very thinly cut plot plate to kind of give it the illusion of a little more structure than just like a hollow piece of plastic. So first I've prepared this little piece here, which is just a piece of plot plate that I cut to be roughly the size of this piece. We're just gonna cement this in place. All right, so now that's here. Uh, and once this uh, hand is plugged in, or the arm I should say, will rest here. I am going to put uh, some aftermarket hands in here that are a little nicer than the polycap ones. Uh, so we'll do that in just a moment. Uh, but for now, let's begin lining this piece with some plot plate. And to do that, I just have to sand down the inside of it a little bit because there is a teeny bit of a plastic lip where the plot plate's gonna be sitting. So uh, that would make it a little bit difficult to cement these down. All right, so looks a little bit messy because I just slapped a bunch of plastic putty on there, which I'm going to sand down when it's time to clean this up. But this is essentially done, uh, so I'm going to put that aside. And of course, the other accessory we want to take a look at is the Buster Rifle. I think it's fine just as is. I did carve out uh, the little connector piece here, which attached it to the shield. Uh, the handle or the grip does that itself. It's a little loose, but that's OK. I think we can we can kind of fake it. Uh, now the shield, here it is, after I've sanded it down, um, it is pretty rudimentary still, but uh, let's see how it fits. Let's pop this bad boy on here, and boom, there you go. And then when he turns, it is less hollow looking, so that's kind of nice. So while we wait for that to cure, let's take a look at the hands I'm going to use for this kit. These are high definition model hands from MC Model Shop on Etsy. They're very nice, very nice hands. Uh, so we're going to be using a closed fist for the left hand, so I'm just going to pop this in here. This is going to be glued in place because it doesn't really need to go anywhere. I guess we should probably cement this together, eh? This little yellow piece I've removed because I'm going to be painting it separately, so let's just put it over there for now. Uh, and I need a clamp to keep this thing nice and secure as it cures. Secure as it cures. Secures. That's fun. It's fun little, little sounds I'm making in my mouth there. Okay, now that the torso is ostensibly finished, we are going to, I mean, I haven't put the yellow parts on or cleaned it up yet, but that's that's okay. Now we are going to move on to the waist. One thing I'd like to do is add a um, action base thingy, a little three millimeter peg in there, and then also extend the legs here just a little bit. So let me just remove the legs here. We'll get to those in a sec. The waist section is more or less okay. The only real modification I want to do here is add a action base connector on the bottom. Initially, what I was thinking of doing is widening this piece, but I think it's actually going to be fine. I don't really need to do that. But what I am going to do is drill a little hole in here for the action base. And there we go. Now I'm just going to clean this piece up and put it together and that's it for the waist. That's all we needed to do. So to help kind of explain what we're doing with the legs here, uh, I have almost completely finished modifying one of them and then I've got uh, the unmodified one right next to it. So as you can see, it's very short compared to this one. What we're going to be doing here is called limb extension and I think you'll be happy to know it's actually very simple. Just take some uh, planning and some plastic card, maybe a little bit of measuring or, you know, on the fly measuring if, you, if you're nasty. All we've really done with this one is I've cut out the peg connector for the foot and removed the ankle guard from this thing. First thing we want to do is separate this ankle guard piece from the whole leg. And this is going to take a little bit of doing. We're going to scribe it a few times and then it's just going to come right off. Okay, so now we've separated the ankle guard, uh, and what we're going to do is widen it a little bit, which will allow it to slip over the, uh, the bottom of this foot, which we're going to elongate, and onto the actual ankle. If it's not clear yet, I think it will be in just a sec here. Let's just take some cement. Okay, so I almost cemented uh, this poly cap inside of this joint because I just got off work and I'm a little bit tired. Uh, so I just quickly took that apart and re-cemented it without that thing. And we just want to make sure to cut off these little uh, connectors that the poly cap was plugging into because we don't need those anymore. They're going to get in the way. So after this ankle guard cures completely, uh, I'm going to begin cutting away some of this stuff. 
uh, from the inside here so it will fit better over the leg. So we're going to take this foot and do some modifications. Now I'm going to compare it, oh come on yeah, with the foot that I have modified. So using some little ball joints, as you can see here, I've drilled a hole in the foot and I've removed the original peg. And what I'm doing is just attaching this to here. This is from the Balden Arm Arms set, which is a pretty valuable little customization resource here for, for doing any type of modification. The other thing I've done is I've cut this like back thing. I don't know what the back of the foot is there. I've cut it down a little bit. As you can see, it's quite a bit shorter on mine than it is on the original. So that's what we're gonna do there first. Nice and short. Now we'll just file that down a bit, make sure it's nice and straight. It's very easy to file something to be uneven, so uh, we just want to nice and controlled strokes here with the file. And then we're going to put a little piece of plastic art on top of it just to cap it off so it doesn't look hollow or anything because it is definitely hollow. It doesn't have to be exact, we can clean this up later. So there we go, we've capped the uh, foot thing that we took off. Uh, the next thing we want to do is get rid of this joint here. Now it's a little bit hard to get at because it's in a pretty tight spot. There we go. And then we'll just remove the little, uh, the, the rest of it that's left behind. Carefully now cut yourself, which I've done many times on camera. It's very embarrassing. Uh, and then we're going to take a drill, drill bit. Uh, this is the three millimeter drill bit, which is the biggest one I've got. Uh, so we're not going to use that one right away because it kind of makes a mess of things. Start with a small one. Uh, as a pilot hole. And we're going to drill right here, right into the middle of uh, this, this upper foot portion. Now that our pilot hole has been drilled, uh, I do this with drills all the time, we slowly increase the diameter of our drill bit until we are at the desired size. So for instance, uh, in our case, I mean, uh, that is three millimeters in diameter. There we go. And I've prepared my little ball joint here. So we insert the Balden arm arms joint. God, it's a funny little name there. Uh, and as you can see, it looks a little weird. There's a bit of a space between the bottom of the joint and the, uh, the whatever the center of the foot's called. That's it for the foot. We're going to put it aside with our other modified foot. Isn't that nice? That's fun. So now next up is the lower leg. So we'll just take apart our unmodded one here and I'll show you what I plan on doing. So the first step, as you can see on the bottom here is, uh, this part has been, has been hollowed out and I've put a piece of plastic in there, which extends the proportions a little bit. So what we have to do here is remove this piece. Pretty much remove anything that's gonna be in the way. So this big old uh, uh, peg joint here, we won't need that anymore. So don't worry too much about it. Part of modification is, you know, making your plan and then going in and just cutting away stuff you don't need uh, and using the shell of certain parts to, um, you know, uh, serve as, well, the shell, I guess, of what your scratch built pieces are gonna be in. Um, the spirit of this competition, of course, is to use materials that were, uh, or if, if you plan on doing any modification to it, uh, is to use materials and techniques that were around in, uh, you know, pre-1996. So plastic card, scratch building techniques, all good. Uh, now, another thing we're gonna do is there's a little nub in here that helps the, uh, the knee joint click into place. Uh, it's gonna be tight enough without it, so we don't actually need that. I'm going to get rid of it. Um, before I join any pieces together, I like to give them just a very gentle uh, sand just to rough up the surfaces. What this does is it helps the cement that's going to go in there uh, make a better bond between the two pieces here. So that's prepped. Before we continue with this, I'm going to uh, work on uh, this piece here, the, the whole knee joint. The structure of this piece is going to mostly be the same. Now the main, th the first thing we're going to do is we're going to replace this polycap joint with a plastic version that that I've made. Uh, and that one, as you can see, is in here. It looks mostly the same. You know, you can do things a little bit differently if you feel like it, but I think for our purposes, this works just fine. And it keeps the original kind of spirit of the kit, the original charm of it, without making anything look too futuristic, too different. So I'm gonna keep that over here and we will replace this joint. Where's my spudger? Man, I put stuff everywhere. Here we go. So separating this piece here, we can see the interior of the knee. Now, before anyone asks about this joint here, uh, it is not very complex. It is literally just a plastic replica of the original polycap joint. All I did was slap three pieces of plot plate together and then drilled two three millimeter holes in them and then did some widening until they were five millimeters, which is the size of the uh, peg that they have to fit into. So the next thing we wanna do is give this thing a hip swivel, which will kind of extend its proportions just a wee bit in the thigh. What we wanna do is cut right here because we're going to use this peg as the guide in which these two pieces are assembled later. So I'm gonna use uh, my little uh, real touch marker here 
just as a bit of a um, safety guide. And this is going to be a little bit rough. We're not we're not really like that concerned about uh, perfect measurements or anything. Uh, because most of this is going to be hidden. Yeah, I just, I feel like I'm practiced enough that I don't really think this is going to be too big of a concern. Uh, at least it wasn't when I made this version. This is what the finished version will look like, and as you can see, there's a hip swivel. The only thing that's remaining to do on this is uh, sand down the uh, extra plot plate in here. So that brings us to the knee joint. Uh, so looking here, you can see the polycap piece in here. We're going to remove that because we've just put a plastic replica in that uh, serves the same purpose. So let's get rid of you. Boom, you can get out of here. And something we're also going to do is remove this little thruster bell on the back and replace it later with a nicer looking thruster. So I'm just going to use my hobby knife to get rid of that. This one, I'm going to use the nippers. There we are. And give the parts a gentle sand just so they uh, bond together a little bit better. Now, I want to make sure I cement this together the correct way because this one action accidentally inverted the leg, so the, the thigh is actually backwards, but it doesn't really matter. So uh, I will copy that mistake <laughs> with this one. They look similar enough, I don't think it's that big a deal. Just need to sand out this little peg hole a little bit more. Um, this wasn't an exact science. Uh, I'm just kind of doing this very ad hoc. Getting there, getting there. There we are. Uh, now this piece has been cemented. We're just going to, I'm going to put some clamps on it to secure it in place. Uh, so it, uh, you know, here is better. Whoops, just throwing stuff. Here are some big clamps I use for, I don't remember where these came from. <laughs> I'm from some hardware store. Uh, there we go. So we're just going to leave that aside for it to sit. For a little bit. Now we take our saw and we just very carefully begin sawing on the guided line. And as you'll notice, this is right between the poly cap and that peg here. We want to keep our saw as even as possible just by pulling it uh, between those two things. Whoops, just gouge the uh, cutting mat here, but that's what it's for, I suppose. There goes one. Again, it's not totally even. That's okay for now. Now we have our two pieces here. We're just going to cement these uh, these thigh parts together, and then I'm just gonna mask this, this thing and paint it, or paint the joint by hand. It doesn't really matter. That'll be easy enough, so that's not a concern for me. These two parts go together. We're gonna cement them. Okay, now that that's cemented together, our next step is to remove the joint that we use to guide them together. Let me take my nippers here and clip and clip. We'll just add some more cement and we're going to let this sit for a little bit while we work on the next step, which is the upper thigh. Let's just cement the uh, upper thigh together, which will become the hip joint. Now we could replace the kit's actual hips with a peg and, you know, make this a peg system. Uh, I just think this is a little more work than is required for this particular part and it's not really the focus of the mod, so that's why I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay, so now we have two pieces that are cemented together. We just have to wait for these to cure a little bit and then we can continue with the uh, thigh swivel. Flatten it a little bit so we can attach the uh, next part of our modification to it. Uh, keep in mind, as I'm sanding this, this part that's going to be the join, I'm effectively reducing it. It is a reductive process. Uh, so we don't want to do that too much. What we're going to do is attach this piece of plastic card with a little uh, peg in it that I've, that I've prepared here. Uh, there is, this is not anything special. It's literally just a few pieces of plastic guard uh, cemented together with a peg in the center. What we're going to do with that is put it right here. So now we have the beginnings of our thigh joint or hip joint, sorry. Now what we need to do at the top of this, I'll, I'll remove my uh, hip joint from my nearly finished model. And you can see I've put a piece of plastic card in there with a three millimeter peg hole in it that the top of the thigh is going to plug right into and that gives it its thigh swivel showing here. As you can see, it swivels. So let's put a piece of plastic card in there. We're going to use, I don't know, I'm sure I got, I'm sure I have a piece in here I can use. So put some goopy cement up top, attach this piece, boom. Uh, then we're going to switch out our drill bits again so we can make a nice pilot hole for our eventual three millimeter peg. Now we're just drilling out the peg hole and now our hip joint and thigh connect to one another and swivel. Look at that, look at that swiveling. It's great swiveling action. I've just put some putty on the knee joint to close up some of the giant seams I left there. And now the next step nearing the end of our leg modification is we're going to saw this part of the leg, the lower leg, right off. 
and we're going to attach this piece of plastic card in there, which is just two and a half millimeters of plastic card I put together, just, you know, stacking pieces and cementing them until they're a block. That's a lot of limb extension right there. We're gonna need this poly cap back because that's going inside of the leg. So come on there, little guy. <sighs> And we could have cemented this whole thing together beforehand, that would have made things a little bit easier. Oh well, as my fellow Canadian Alanis Morissette once said, you live, you learn. And it's so true, isn't it? This piece of plastic card is going to go on the bottom. Uh, using this sanding stick, we're just going to even out the base of this piece so it can be cemented properly. Because I, I sawed it a little uneven, I'm just going to try and make up for that with my sanding here. It probably won't be perfect, but that's okay. Few things in life are, except for Mrs. Hobby Room. She's wonderful. Now, uh, we're gonna put some cement here and slap this bad boy down, this poorly behaved gentleman. Okay, so that is extended. Uh, the next step would be to attach these together and pop them on the bottom. However, however, uh, if you uh, note my mostly finished version here, uh, there's a little piece of plastic art in between these two, and that's because the natural taper of the bottom of the leg flares out, and if you extend it, it just creates a weirdly, uh, it's hard to explain, uh, but it doesn't look very good. I've done it before, and this time I plan to avoid it by inserting a piece of plastic art in the center to help uh, encourage that taper. So um, that's what we're going to do. I need, I need some, I need some uh, plot plate here. Where are we at? Here we are. Now I'm just gonna use some super glue for this part because the pieces are a little thin uh, and require some manipulation, which means uh, my ham-fisted fingers, God, I've got hair everywhere. I'm losing hair. I'm losing hair for you guys. Uh, yeah, uh, because the pieces are quite thin and require a lot of manipulation, I'm probably gonna ruin things unless I use some super glue, which has, uh, uh, you know, it's tackier. It's got a an, uh, firmer initial stick to it. Uh, so we'll use our accelerator, which just makes a huge mess. Uh, yum, delicious, love that. Okay, so now we have our two pieces and they have been extended with plot plate. We're going to be connecting them in just a little bit here, but I need to let them sit and cure for a little bit. All right, my camera's overheating, so I gotta uh, do this pretty quick, but I'm going to cement this piece. Whoops, that's close. <laughs> put it on like this. I'm gonna use some super glue to do that. So let's just put a bunch of that on there. Put this in place. Throw it with some accelerator. Make a huge mess. Um, and now I'm just going to attach a piece onto the back because uh, it is a little misaligned and that will make up for it. So it's so a lot of my modification is like, yeah, this is mostly right, but what about this thing I made a mistake with? Okay, now that's gonna cure. Uh, I'm gonna clean it up and it will be much like this. But we'll do that once my camera calms down a little bit. Uh, now, I have those high-definition model hands on here now. I'm going to take one of them off and replace it with this one. Now, uh, I will actually probably have to modify the Buster Rifle's handle just a little bit uh, to fit into this grip. So I'll probably just cut this off and replace it with a piece of plastic card. Sorry, plot plate. I'm trying to say plot plate. I know that is, uh, <laughs> I know that's like the thing people say. So <laughs> I've just always called it plastic card. But plot plate, plastic card, you know what I mean. It's the same thing. Oh, i got to sand this down a bit because I made the grip a little bit too big. Uh, here's the kit so far, pretty much ready to be painted. The only thing, the only thing I've left to do before I start priming and painting is, uh, well, first, modify this little handle grip here, which I'm just gonna slide some plastic card in there. Uh, and then second, I'm going to attach little thrusters onto the back here of the knees uh, because I took those ones off because I didn't like how they looked. Uh, and then I might put another tiny one right here up in the butt. <laughs> oh dear. Before I forget, there was a little section that I added here. Uh, it's just like a little collar piece I made out of plastic card. I don't know where my footage for that went, but basically all it is is pieces of plastic card stacked together and then cemented in a rough box shape. And then I just glued them down onto here with a ball joint. Uh, and that, you know, fits the head. It's really something fancy there, but I thought I should probably explain it uh, just in case someone is wondering uh, what's, what's going on with that, that old noggin. Uh, but basically we are ready for priming and then I will show off what this is going to look like and we'll paint it in the next video. And here is my 1-144 scale 1995 Wing Gundam ready for priming. Uh, overall, I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. I definitely could have spent more time on the arms uh, and I've yet to attach those little thrusters on the back of the legs. I'm actually going to paint those separately so I'll just drill a hole and pop them in after it has been primed. Uh, but overall, I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's gonna turn out pretty good. I think it's pretty good. 
All right, so let's go prime this kit. Spoiler alert, it's gonna be gray. And here's my Wing Gundam all primed up, uh, all nice and gray. Uh, you might be asking, wait a minute, Liam, you usually prime your kits in black. And that is true, good observation. And I will be doing that for this as well. Uh, but the reason I chose gray for this demonstration is because it's a lot easier to see uh, your surface air imperfections and mistakes uh, with gray primer than it is with black or with white. Um, I mean, colored, light colored primer works too. Anything that's pastel and bright uh, is, is a good way to notice um, little imperfections here and there. Uh, so I'll be able to see areas I need to rescribe, areas I need to fix that I have little scratches or anything. For the most part, everything turned out pretty good. There's, there are a few spots I need to clean up, um, but that's why I did it like this. So, and it's also kind of, I don't know, I actually really like the full gray aesthetic like this. So thanks for sticking with me for this super long modification video, and uh, we will continue with painting the kit in the next video, so that'll be nice. Uh, I'm gonna do all the little cleanups by then, so you won't see any any gross surface imperfections or anything like that. You've seen enough of the all that stuff in this episode, so I think we're ready to begin painting. But overall, pretty happy with how this turned out, and I cannot wait to paint it. So as I'm working, I'm realizing this is actually uh, taking quite a while, so I think this might end up being a three-parter. Sorry, I know. Uh, but uh, I think that's the best way to show it to you, so it's not just like an hour-long thing of me showing you very small plastic things and talking very slowly. I feel like it might get really boring, so I'm gonna do the painting in the next video and we'll be able to show off the finished kit in that one. I hope you're enjoying this series. If you do, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. There's tons of Gunpla content on here. And take a look at the Liam's Hobby Room Discord because there's a lot of fun folks in there and we seem to be having a real humdinger of a time. So until next time, everyone, take care of one another, give your moms a hug, and I'll see you guys next time on Liam's Hobby Room. <laughs>